Welcome to HumanBodyHelp.com's line of educational videos. For more videos like this and other resources for learning anatomy and physiology, please visit my website at www.HumanBodyHelp.com. Hello, this is Dr. Loach from HumanBodyHelp.com and today I will be demonstrating the anatomy of the humerus. Let's first start off with orientation. First thing we need to do is figure out the difference between anterior and posterior, superior and inferior, medial, lateral, proximal, distal. So we're looking now at the anterior view of the humerus. The posterior view would be this view here. Turning back to the anterior view, we need to distinguish between medial and lateral. The medial side of the humerus would be this side right here. You can tell because of the head of the humerus faces medially, as well as the medial epicondyle of the humerus. The lateral side of the humerus is going to be on this side. The proximal end of the humerus is going to be this end up here, and the distal end would be down here. This proximal end specifically the head of the humerus that would articulate with the scapula which would be right here in the distal end of the humerus this end right here would be near the elbow the first structure we'll look at is this smooth articular surface right here known as the head you can see it's a nice round head directly inferior to the head we have the anatomical neck now the anatomical neck shouldn't be confused with the surgical neck, which is down here where it gets thinner in this area. Surgical neck is called the surgical neck because oftentimes the humerus is fractured at this location. This structure right here is the lesser tubercle. This structure over here is the greater tubercle because it's larger. Both of these tubercles or bumps would be sites for muscular attachment. The subscapularis muscle would attach here at the lesser tubercle and at the greater tubercle we would have the sits muscles attaching here. Supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and then teres minor. In between these two tubercles we have a groove right here known as the intertubercular groove and then it's also known as the bicipital groove. Now this groove has lips on either side of it or ridges on either side and those ridges are also sites for muscular attachment. This lateral lip of the bicipital groove or lateral ridge, this is where the pectoralis major muscle would insert. This medial lip of the bicipital groove would be a site for muscular attachment of the latissimus dorsi muscle. Also, teres major would insert here as well. Okay. Moving down the shaft of the humerus, we can see this roughened area here. This roughened area would be the deltoid tuberosity. Now, the deltoid tuberosity is where the deltoid muscle would wrap over the shoulder and insert right on here. Okay. Continuing down the shaft to the distal end of the humerus, we've got these smooth articular surfaces right here known as the condyles of the humerus. Now these condyles have specific names. This condyle right here, round, that's going to be the capitulum. Okay, now the capitulum means dense or compact head and this capitulum is going to be the articulation for the head of the radius. This smooth articular surface over here, which is kind of spindle shaped, this is the trochlea. And trochlea means spindle. Okay. Now, proximal to these condyles here, we have two indentations. This indentation, superior, or I should say proximal to the trochlea, this indentation is the coronoid fossa. The coronoid process of the ulna would fit into that when we fully flex our elbow. This indentation over here, proximal to the capitulum, this indentation is the radial fossa. Radial head would fit into that when we fully flex at our elbow. 
Now these are the condyles. The roughened region superior to the condyles would be the epicondyles. Okay? Now this condyle right here, the larger of the two, this is going to be the medial epicondyle. And then this one over here would be the lateral epicondyle. Now the lateral epicondyle is going to continue up the lateral aspect of the humerus is a ridge right here. So we often call that the lateral supracondylar ridge. There's going to be a couple of muscles that attach there, mainly the brachioradialis muscle and extensor carpi radialis longus. Down here on these epicondyles, we would have the forearm flexors attaching to the medial epicondyle, and the forearm extensors would attach to the lateral epicondyle. Let's move now to the posterior aspect of the humerus. We can still see head up here as a smooth articular surface and the anatomical neck as well as the surgical neck. We can see the posterior aspect of the greater tubercle that is a large bump and again will have muscles attaching to that. As we move down the shaft of the humerus we'll have this groove right here called the radial groove. The radial nerve is going to pass through that in between two heads of the triceps brachii, lateral head and medial head. Okay. We can continue downward to the distal aspect of the posterior humerus and we can see medial epicondyle, lateral epicondyle, part of the trochlea down here, and this indented area right here. This is called the olecranon fossa. Okay, fossa is a shallow depression. Now this olecranon fossa is where the olecranon process would fit into when we fully extend our forearm at our elbow. If you found this video helpful, click like and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to visit www.humanbodyhelp.com.